We, like you said, have talked about all of the potential health benefits of these drugs in, you know, heart disease, kidney disease, liver disease. This was sort of unexpected because this study took place during the pandemic. And obviously, scientists at the time when the study started weren't expecting COVID to happen and weren't expecting to be able to study the effects of the virus, you know, in this population and with this drug. And so what they found was that patients who were on Wigovi had, that Wigovi didn't stop infections or anything like that, but the patients that were infected fared better if they were on Wigovi. So there were lower rates of death, lower rates of illness in the group that was getting Wigovi. Why? It's it's interesting. I mean, it makes sense from the perspective of, you know, people we saw during the pandemic that obesity was really closely linked with severe disease. It was a risk factor, a comorbidity for um, getting more sick and dying. Hospitalizations were higher in people with obesity. And so it, it makes sense that a drug that helps people lose so much weight would also have an effect on other health outcomes that are related, like COVID infections. But doctors were also saying that they don't really know exactly why the drug helped. There could be some other independent effect, like the anti-inflammatory effects that we know that these drugs have. Um, so that could be going on, too, and, and they just don't really know. Do, do we get the idea yet, Madison, that this drug is going to be start going to start be using for things other than weight loss and diabetes? Yeah, I mean, Wagovi is already approved for people with obesity and heart disease. So that is something that, you know, Nova Nordisk had this this study last year, and it showed that Wagovi cut the incidence of, of heart attacks and deaths, deaths or the risk of heart attacks and strokes by 20%. Um, and so it's already being used for people with obesity and heart disease. And then there are all of these other uses. Lily's trying to get it approved in sleep apnea. So we are starting to see this, um, sort of open the door into other indications and diseases. And we're already seeing doctors use them off-label for other things like PCOS and, and fertility and things like that too that are not approved uses. So it just sort of seems like right now the potential for these drugs is is pretty endless. Um, does it also help with insurance? Like the more things that it takes care of, you're going to get coverage? Exactly. Yeah, because these drugs are really expensive and a lot of insurance companies are not weren't maybe until now convinced that covering a weight loss drug that costs a thousand dollars a month was a good you know investment and in, in use of of funds and so the more he other health benefits that these drug companies can prove that the drugs help with the more that they can convince insurers that they're actually worth paying for and that in the long term um they'll help with with other health outcomes and maybe bring down costs in the future